What's up? What's up, everybody? How you guys doing? I see Vens here drawing already. Awesome. This is great. What we're going to be doing today is adding some forest monsters on here. We're going to be... I, I love when there's scenes like this. Like, anytime I've, I've worked in Magma and there's a big scene like this where there's, uh, you know, a lots of lots of little nooks and crannies and lots of things going on where, where when I see everybody add their their little creatures or little monsters or little, you know... I, one time I did a scene like this and I had... I had uh, somebody floating in there and everybody, it was like somebody that was dead floating in the river and everybody just mercilessly mocked me for it for being so dark. But, <laughs> but I love when everybody has, uh, has their own uh, type of monster they can add. So um, feel free to jump in. Anybody can and, uh, and, and add your monster there. Um, as long as everybody can, you know, can get there and all that. Um, we're going to get rolling. I see you in there, Vens. Let's, let's, uh, let's try to, uh, let's, let's tear this up. But I don't know. I don't know if I see, I don't see anybody. Oh, there's some other people coming into Magma. Okay, great. Yeah. It was a little bit, I gave him, I gave uh, Solomon the link a little bit last minute. So it's good. People will trickle in. This is going to, this is going to be good. Um, so, so I just wanted to talk like briefly about, about how to, um, how to kind of approach this, right? Like if, and you know, it's, um, Oh, yep. The stream, uh, the stream just started, just started. Yes, 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 exactly. Right. So people will trickle in. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Vince. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about just how to approach this. Like, you know, a lot of times if you've got a scene like this, people just start painting, they just start putting something in. They don't really think about it. They're just like, Oh, I'm going to put a char character right here, which is fine. Like when you're designing the silhouette and you're designing like what the drawing is going to be, where, where everything is going to be, that's all totally fine. But at a certain point you have to start to, to think, like and, and 3d artists that do effects like they know this right you can't just take a 3d object that you lit in your you know in blender or whatever and just drop it in on like into a scene like this and have it fit right you've got to know what's what's happening with the light you know what's happening with you know the color here what's happening with the you know even the topography right if you want to put it in you've got to think about you know the topography that's here and what is this 3d surface so you almost want to just like at first like you almost want to just like um yeah like color matching exactly like color matching is really important and really like the type of light is kind of going to be like a really important part of the process so like if you're if you're looking at this like you want to think like all right let's say there was a sphere like hovering over this water right well if there was a sphere like hovering over this water where would the light be coming from what would it typically you know what what would it look like what would um what would uh you know what would the shadows be like would they be harsh shadows would it be more diffuse light would it be now obviously light going through all these trees and even it looks like on more of like a cloudy day there aren't like super sharp shadows and things like that um it's going to be a little bit more diffuse here but you can also see the direction right so if i look at like uh this tree like here let me go outside my sphere here if i look at like this tree i can see like ah okay i'm getting like a little clue to like the direction underneath here with these rocks i'm getting clues for the direction underneath here like okay this part's getting hit by the light like right here that part's getting hit by the light this part's in shadow this part's getting hit by the light so you can almost you know you know look at that and say okay we've got light coming kind of from you know the top right or whatever kind of coming down to the left is probably going to be you can then you can start to look at it and say oh, okay this shadow here yeah that makes sense with that right so then you have like a sort of a, a basic understanding of the direction of the you know general feel of the light and then you want to think about like what what's the value scheme what's the you know all of that so like if i look at this and i'm like let's say i was making like a uh like a sort of like a rock texture right right yeah it's kind of like photo bashing exactly exactly that's sort of the way to think about it it's like photo bashing uh, but um, but it's really about also like getting the character of the light. Like you really want to get the character of the light and you want to, um, oh, hold on one second. I'm going to change my, let me change. I want to change my shortcuts real quick to this. Uh, one sec. Let me just change this. I can't remember where I put it. Other, I think it's under. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so let's get rid of this. I always change it to... Um, I don't know why I don't have it set on this, but I, I changed the opacity here. If anybody's watching too, I like to do this because I do this like in uh, in Photoshop as well, where I have the different opacities set to the numbers. So 
uh, because a lot of the rendering that I do, like I'll I change the opacity quite a bit while I'm doing it, right? So so this is going to be more diffuse light, right? There's going to be a, like a little bit of bounce light, like coming up, like it's going to be that sort of a thing, like you know, coming up and 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 it's not going to be an overly not going to be an overly harsh highlight. Like it's going to be a little bit more, a little bit more diffuse. And, and so you want something that can kind of sit in the mix, you know, it'd be like if you have a song and uh, you come in with this like super loud trumpet, right? You come in with this like super loud trumpet and just like, like blast everybody out. And it's like this quiet romantic song and everyone's like, what the heck? Right. You can do that on in a situation like this where you're putting in something and you're like, it, it doesn't quite fit, right? It doesn't quite fit with what's there in the scene, like color wise, like, you know, a uh, value wise, like different things like that. So you want to think about like, how do you, how do you get this to look like it belongs here? Right. So what would it look like? Like a little bit of a shadow on the water there. Like if that was actually floating there, this probably would be a little bit brighter. If it was actually floating there, it might get a little bit more you know, showing up in there or whatever. And so, so just think about that. Like, I think that's an important thing to think about is like when you're, when you're, and I, I don't want to go too far with it because I want us to have some fun with it. But, um, but I, uh, you know, I just like to like to encourage everybody to think about the lighting scenario that, that you're seeing really think about the environment because that's, that's the hard part, right? The hard part, like if you're making a creature, you're making, you know, any kind of concept design or any kind of, and really kind of any any painting from imagination and you don't have a direct reference that you're that you're copying you know um you uh or that or even that you're you're pulling directly from it's going to be really hard to to make sense of that so you almost have to think in your head like you're a you're a 3d program and think about okay where is the light source how big is the light source is it diffuse like what colors are bouncing around from the environment like what you know and and it's 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 fascinating it's fascinating to to do that too and it's very challenging of course, it's extremely challenging to do that, um, but that's the goal. So, like, I like to do sometimes just to do like a little thing like this and try to get like a handle on what you know. If it had moss on it, what would the moss be? You know, like okay, well, let's uh, let me let me lock the opacity here. What would the moss look like if I had moss on this? Right, like why well, would have like moss and and maybe it would. Uh, what would the value scheme be? What would the you know what would it look like on there if I was if I was doing that? And so. That kind of thing. And also, like, I mean, I think when you're thinking about putting a monster or a creature here or something like that, like, you want to think about, like, all right, what, you know, like, what would this creature in this environment, you know, what would it, what would it look like? What would it, you know, if it lived in this environment, it, it would be a part of the scene as well, right? The monster would, would be, you know, um, you know, the monster might be crawling through streams all the time. If, if you were crawling through streams all the time, you'd probably have moss on you or you'd probably have you know, like, like evidence of that. Right. Or, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be a bright purple monster. If, if you lived in this forest, if you were trying to hide from other, uh, other, you know, creatures or whatever, you know, you it wouldn't work. Right. So it's just one of those things to think about. So, so anyways, I don't want to go too far. Like I said, I want to have some fun here and, and just, you know, like, you know, kind of kick it with you guys and, and do some stuff. But, uh, but, uh, I wanted to throw that out there because I I've noticed that a lot from students where they, they just don't, they don't think about, uh, you know, placing the context properly and really getting things in, in the, you know, in the right place and all that. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to, I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to, I like putting stuff in the water. I'm going to put something back here in the water. I think like here, let's do this. Let me grab another layer. That's nice vans. I love that. And also you guys too, the other thing I'll tell you is, um, like try to go through the process here of, uh, like, you know, go through the process of, you know, doing like a quick sketch and like, you know, go through the full process, like do a sketch, get, um, get, uh, oh, I need to get rid of my shadow here. Yeah, there we go. You know, do a full sketch and then do like a silhouette, you know, and that will help you a big time because you can use softer brushes and things like that. Like create, do a, do a sketch, then do a silhouette, lock the opacity, come in and, and be able to do that. It helps a lot. So. That's interesting because those things I sort of know, but applying it is hard. Yeah, it is right. I know that's the thing. That's the thing, Vens. Like it's it's it definitely is one of those things where it's like, oh yeah, you know, it's like, well, it's just like if you're a musician, it's like, hey, like people are playing a song, like you know, play play what's appropriate for this song, you know, and and it's like, okay, you know, that's one thing, you know, to say that, but then to actually sit down and do it, it becomes a lot more difficult, right? Um, 
So, you know, it, yeah, it is. But that's, that's why this is really, really good practice. Like if you try to really make it, if you try to make it like a part of the environment and you really take, you know, great pains to do that, to make it a part of the environment, I, I think it's really, it's very, very helpful. Like it's really instructive. Like you learn where, what you know, what you don't know about certain lighting schemes and all that stuff. I think it's really good. So, um, and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't even have to be anything crazy. Like it doesn't have to be a crazy, you know, monster creature, nothing super complex or whatever, but just, just work on it, integrating it, integrating it into, into the environment. And it just helps a ton. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to, I'm going to drop in this silhouette again. I like to do a, just a quick sketch, get an idea of what, what kind of shape I want. And I'm not using a black here because I, I want to be able to see it a little bit better. I think in the river, I'm going to have this, like the, the rapids, like going around this, this, uh, this, this weird creature, you know, he's like, you know, and, and, and you know, it, it's, uh, it's funny. I'm going to make his limbs really small because like this is so shallow. So he's in here, but I'm going to make it so that his limbs are tiny so that, that people can assume like his, his legs are super tiny too. Maybe I'll make him a little smaller either way. We'll see. I might make him a little bit smaller. I had a couple, a couple of things. Here we go. Let's make him a little bit smaller and put him in here. Okay. Yeah, it definitely is a good exercise. It's something that, you know, I've done quite a bit. And uh, and it makes a big difference. Because then, and the, you know, the other thing too is like, you know, it's really the same exercise as, as uh, you know, creating an environment and then putting creatures in your own environment, right? You have to be able to think about where light's bouncing and all that. And the more you do that, the, the better you're going to get at it. So, um, you know, definitely, definitely helpful. Okay. I want to see what everybody's doing. Nice. Nice. This is cool. And also you guys too, don't forget that like, if you need to, you could draw it bigger and, um, and then make it smaller, right? There's no reason why you, why you have to stick with the size that you have, you know, or you can take it, morph it, you know, make it, uh, make it bigger, make it smaller, twist it, change it, you know, don't feel like you're stuck in, stuck in that. Okay. Let's see here. Yeah, see, I want, like, uh, like I like to, the other thing I like to do whenever I'm doing something like this is think about the story, right? So think about the story behind this creature, right? So so I'm going to make this guy actually have, like, a super wide mouth. And so what he would do is, like, I think he'd be, like, an omnivore or something. Like, he'd eat a lot of different things. But I think I'm going to have him, like, opening his mouth like this, like, really big, like this. And what he does is, like, kind of, you know, plow through that water and eat all the minnows, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> That'd be fun. You know, <laughs> I'm going to give him like a weird, a weird, uh, weird eyes and stuff too. Cause he might be going under the surface. So he would need to be able to look around to see if anybody's going after him on the surface. So I'm going to have him, uh, have him, um, have these longer eyes, like almost like snail eyes or something. And I want to, uh, you know, and, and, uh, so he's more of like prey, not as uh, not as much a predator, you know. Um, but but I want to think about like, okay, what would what would what would his skin look like, right? If that's the case, he's probably going to look more like a rock, right? Would be interesting to give him like sort of like a rock texture, which would be funny. <laughs> um, so that even like that little fin he's got sticking up would be a little bit more like a rock. So we'll see if I can get him to him to look a little more more like he's from this stream bed which reminds me of like like growing up man like when i see things like this like i i grew up in maryland and uh um man like i used to just spend so much time out in the woods like tons of time like just that would be like my punishment my punishment would be if i if i uh, you know got in trouble it would be like you can't go outside and i would play nintendo too for sure but my big punishment would be like you can't can't go outside and play outside i'd be like no <laughs> if that happened. i remember one time i remember one time i was like i was getting a little bit older and um i was like man i was like i was like i can kind of get away with doing the wrong thing for a little bit and uh like i was like i can stay out because that was my big thing i always wanted to stay out longer than what my parents said they would make me come back at a certain time of night but i'd always want to stay out longer 
Um, and they weren't overboard. I was just like insatiable for being outside. And uh, and they were like, so I was like, man, I'm going to come home late because I can, I was like, I can leverage this. I was like, I can deal with what the punishment that they they dish out. I was like, it's, I was like, it's kind of worth it to stay out late. So I stayed out like really late one time. I said to my dad, I was like, oh, I guess you're going to punish me with this and this. And he's like, no. He's like, I'm, you can't go outside for like a week or whatever. And I was like, no. It's like my plan backfired. I was like, dang it. <laughs> so, yeah. So I used to I used to play outside all the time. All the time. <laughs> it was like my thing for sure. <laughs> really funny. My dad used to whistle. Like he had the, like, you know, people can put like their pinkies in their mouth and and whistle like crazy to, uh, you know, like whistle super loud. Like that's how he was. He could do that totally. And I, I don't know how he, I don't know how he could do that. Um, I still have tried to this day and I can't, I can't do it. I need somebody to show me how to do it. He's tried to show me before, but I can't, I'm not good at it. Um, but he used to whistle really loud and, and I would hear it from like, it was probably like half a mile away or something. I would hear it like, which is, which is pretty fun. Oh, you stayed in and played your Mega Drive. Yes, the Mega Drive. <laughs> yeah. I played. <coughs> I played. Um, dang it! What was that game? Was it Shining Force? I think I played a game called Shining Force. Or um, oh, what was it? Oh, what was it? Um, oh, hold on, I gotta look it up. Like uh, RPGs. Um, Genesis, Genesis era, because I can't. I, it's gonna bug me if I can't remember it. Um, it was. Let's see. It's got to be on this list of like. So there was Shining Force. I did play that, but it was. I played Fantasy Star a lot. I did play that too. I think it was Shining Force. I think is the one I'm thinking of. There was another one that was like you were in a dungeon. And uh, it was kind of like uh, Shining Force, but oh, would you say uh, uh, Jungle Strike or Jurassic Park? Oh, nice. Okay, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I would. I like. But the thing about Nintendo is like that was the big thing when I was like when I was like twelve. That's what was around like the original NES. So the thing about it was they, they hadn't figured out yet that they could make people addicted to video games like by like giving them constant like you know rewards and like different things like that and so they just made their games as hard as humanly possible like they were like that was what they wanted to do they were like we're gonna make like ninja gaiden and make it like you know make it super difficult like beyond difficult you know and uh and like you'd get frustrated you know You'd get so frustrated, like you would just play it for like 10, 15 minutes and you were like, okay, I can't play this anymore. So that's kind of what happened with me with Nintendo. Like I would play, but I would play in bursts like that. I do remember playing Final Fantasy, like the original Final Fantasy. Everybody's probably like, oh my gosh, you played the original. I remember playing the original Final Fantasy and uh, I played that for a while and Dragon Warrior or something on Nintendo. But that's, uh, but the, but other than that, I didn't, I like it would, I would lose some, um, yeah, Ninja Gaiden. Yeah, Ninja Gaiden was good, wasn't it? It was so hard. Like, it was so, so hard. Like, oh, like, man, that was so difficult. And I, there's this, uh, there's this show. I don't know if it's, I don't think it's on anymore, but it's called Retro Game Master. It was on Kotaku, if anybody knows what I'm talking about. And there was this guy that was, that would play, he would play, um, like NES games and like older games mostly NES and he would play them sit in a room and play them till he beat it. So he would stay in there till he beat it. Like and Ninja guy then like he, he stayed in there for like a, so long, like he was in there for like four days or something like that. And then, you know, viewers would send him stuff like they would send him, um, you know, like uh, snacks or like different things like that. Oh my gosh. It was brutal though. Watching him play that. Like it was absolutely awful absolutely awful like watching him play that <laughs> crazy they made the game so hard and it was like it was like uh there was no you, you a lot of games like there was no continue 
it was just like, oh, you just get like, or you get like two continues or something like that. And they're like, that's it. That's all you get. You know, <laughs> it was crazy. It was crazy. I remember uh, being at my friend's house and we were playing Metal Gear Solid, the original, like Metal Gear Solid on Nintendo. And, um, and we had gotten uh, like, um, oh, you enjoy playing on a hard mode by default. Okay, man, that's crazy. Yeah, I couldn't take it a lot of times. Like I couldn't take it, but but we played uh, we played Metal Gear Solid. If you guys know, you know know the original one. Um, there's been so many of them now, but but we played Metal Gear Solid and uh, and we got like almost all the way up to the end, which was really hard because you could you had to do it in one run, like you had to do it in one go. You couldn't do it in you know multiple multiple takes, like you had to do it in one go. And so we got to the very end, and like my friend's mom she was like you guys she said uh we've got lunch or something like that and we've spent like three or four hours trying to get to a certain like looking up certain things and seeing which way we should go and trying to get there and um then finally you know we get to this last part and we have to pause it well his little sister comes in with like a little ball or whatever and she's like playing around and he starts saying to her like listen don't come near the nintendo like as he starts saying it she throws the ball up in the air and, like bounces off the it like bounced off the the couch like went like it was like this like it was like <laughs> it was like a movie it like bounced off the wall like bounced off the wall bounced down off the couch like bounced down like this like rolled super slow where the nintendo was on the ground and then went boink and hit the reset button and he was like gel like <laughs> freaked out like totally freaked out like both of my they were twins but the one the one twin he's like freaked out and i think he got tried i think i had to go home because he was like i like, totally just oh like going crazy <laughs> I felt bad for her. <laughs> Crazy. Good to see you, KT. KT put a little message up in here. Sorry. Uh, good. I just now saw it. Good to see you. We're just talking nostalgia. Talking a little bit of nostalgia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was bad. It was bad. They were like freaking out. They were freaking out. <laughs> Hilarious. So funny. And, but that's the way the games were. They were so brutal. They were so so brutal. No, no, uh, no, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Like you just had to like, you had to beat it. You know, you had to beat it in one go. That's it. Metal Gear Solid was fun, man. That was like, that was a fun game. I remember. Okay. Yeah. No, that's right. No, that's right. Now they did have. They were smart. Like Nintendo was smart. They they released um. They released a Nintendo Power, right? And Nintendo Power was good because, you know, nobody knew how to beat the games. And so Nintendo Power was like the magazine version that would, <laughs> that would, you know, like you would have all the maps for all the boards and all that stuff. They were so smart. Nintendo was so smart. They were like, they were like, let's make them really hard and then release a magazine that shows people how to do it, you know? And, and uh, so <laughs> really, really interesting. Um but yeah, I used to love getting Nintendo Power, man. When I get got those, I have them. I actually have them on my iPad. Like I'll look at them for like the art and different things now. Like it's it's so fun, so fun. Yeah, the N sixty four. I thought so too. I thought so too. It was really good. You know, my buddy had it. I never had it. My buddy had it, but um, I had the Genesis. That's why I had to like pick one, you know, and I I picked the Genesis um but my buddy had it we used to play it all the time it was a little bit overpriced and and what's funny is if you look back like the games are the same they're like the same like sort of like uh price that they would be now kind of you know like it's a little bit less it was a little bit less back then than it is now but it was like pretty much the same so like mike tyson's punch out costs like 25 or 30 bucks right and and that was back then and now games cost you know 20 30 bucks or whatever which was interesting to me like i saw that i was looking at an old ad and i was like man i was like mike tyson's punch out was like was like and it's funny because somebody could make that game now it took a lot of effort and a lot of work to make that game back then you know it's different than now but like somebody could make that game now if they had the idea they could make it so quick you know <laughs> it's really funny 3do oh yeah the 3do with space hulk yes 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 the 3do that's right I forgot about that. I forgot about that. Need for speed. Yeah, that's right. 
Yes, Need for Speed. I remember that. I used to play this one game too, where it was like you would knock people off. You were on a motorcycle and you would knock people off a what was it? Rush something rush or I can't remember what it was, but now what I'm doing here, like I've done a lot of textures and I'm adding, I'm adding like some, some highlights to this guy to show that he's wet. Right. So I'm, I'm trying to kind of think about the light source, think about what's here, like think about where this creature would be, you know, a little bit more shiny and stuff like that. Like I want to, I want to get some of these textures on here. A lot of, um, if you guys are, are, you know, wondering about textures and, and painting textures, um, you know, a lot of it comes through uh, what's happening with the highlight. There's other things too. This is like in my um, textures class on schools, I always talk about, I have like a whole breakdown of different, different things that will define one texture from another. But in general, like a, if something's wet, like a really sharp highlight is really good. Like a, that's going to tend to, make it look like um uh, like the surface uh, of that you know creature or whatever is wet like if you have a sharp highlight like that you need like a smooth transition in some other areas too but but in general if something's wet it's going to have a harsher like more hard edge to highlight you might get some some you know areas you know um that will catch tiny little highlights and things like that but then the other thing that you'll get too if somebody's wet is like sort of like a lighter area like um in the reflect light like you'll see like on this side like on the left side of this creature where i'm doing this if anybody's seeing that like you can see like a layer of of sort of like glossiness that's going to give you like that glossy layer uh, that will make somebody make something look uh look very wet as well and you want to think about every raised surface that you've got right so the lip is going to be raised over here and so that's going to have a little bit of a highlight on it like the eyeball is going to have a little bit of a highlight on it and if that stuff's wet you're gonna you're gonna get that kind of a kind of a feel with it so um yeah fun i'm gonna i'm gonna i want to do multiple creatures on here too i don't want to i want to move past just the one but or if i can make his make him have like ridges on his on his lips like yeah like he's got like He's sort of like a demented frog or something, this guy that I'm making. He's a little bit weird, for sure. I want to back up and see what you guys are doing. I've been I've been zoomed in looking at this. Nice guys. This is awesome. Hey, that's great. I love that like moss dragon over there too. And Venz, that that's awesome, dude. That that uh that huge um uh, troll or whatever. I love that. That's super cool. <laughs> That's really fun. Super fun. Love it. Okay, I want to give this guy some like rockish textures on here. I want to give him like some rougher textures on his skin. Just a little bit of it. Like some spot. I want to give him like kind of like some spotty. Yeah, like that kind of thing. Like if he's got Got spots or something showing up like that. And I want to have the water splashing in front of him. I wonder, I'm going to look for a brush on here that has sort of like that, that kind of feel to it. I think there are some. This is kind of cool. Scattered eggs may work for that. If I use like a lower opacity, uh, do it by density and also shape by that. Yeah, I could probably get this to. Yeah, that's kind of cool. That works actually for like that splash coming up. See, that's where. You want to think about brushes as as conveying, you know, a texture or a shape or something like that. Because this, when it's really big, you know, you think about scattered eggs. You're like, ah, eh, that's not, you know, that's not going to help me at all, right? But it's, but really, what you're looking for is you're looking for a a breakup pattern or like a shape that you can lay down. And so that scattered eggs actually works fine if you're if you're looking for like a splash texture or something like that, you know. So. Um, you know, so think outside the box when it comes to brushes. You know, don't necessarily always uh, always reach for that same one. Try some, try some other things. You still can. You can use a round brush and achieve good results. You can pretty much do whatever you want. I remember uh, Craig Mullins talking about how he did. Um, it, like at first, especially like you know when people weren't really digitally painting, like he was using a mouse. He used a mouse for professional work for like a really long time, like a really long time. A mouse and like. Apple paint, you know, like for 
like a super long time. Like <laughs> we have to go. The Bobby Choose making you uh, some uh, concurrency. He's also making a study in a bit. And I said, uh, "Oh yeah, no problem." Oh, got you, got you, Vens. Yes, no problem, no problem, no problem at all, you guys. Thanks for making it. It looks awesome. It looks really cool. You guys did a good, really, really cool stuff. I love it. I might paint a little bit on yours, Vens. I might go over uh, yours and paint a little bit on there. And and just go over because it's really cool. I'll add some other textures to it. Yeah, cool stuff, man. Really cool stuff. Yeah, no problem. No problem. No problem at all. Good to see you. Get some more splashes here. Okay, cool, Vince. Nice. That's awesome. That's great. Okay, good. I'll, I'll paint over top of it and it'll be... It'll, I, that's my favorite is like collaboration. So take care, man. Good to see you. My favorite is like, is, you know, like as a... Um, when I played the band when I was younger, like the jamming, you know, was the most fun. And so that's like, as an artist, I love that too. Like, you know, Rubens had a studio full of people and, uh, and some people would do certain things. Like some people would do Eagles and some people were good at like, you know, uh, figures and some people, you know, so they had a whole studio full of stuff and full of full of uh different artists and full of uh you know different materials and different things and like depending on what the job would require right and so um and so uh like i wish i wish that like i mean studios are kind of like that for games or for movies or things like that people are working together but it'd be cool for like gallery work if people still did that i don't really know if anyone does that i'm not sure if i if i know of anyone that's like creates like a, a studio creates paint paintings not sure that any any studio actually still does that um for, especially for gallery work that would be interesting i think it'd be really interesting so maybe i should start one a studio of uh, me and some buddies and just make our paintings like i oh i know the hildebrandt brothers like they're il they're illustrators the hildebrandt brothers like they um they will do like il like paintings together and illustrations together i know they do that and i justin sweet and vance kovacs they they do that a little bit um, a little bit like they don't do, I don't know if they work on the same canvas, but they work on the same projects a lot. So that would be good, but you know, or that works for them, but and that would be good to do something like that too. But I don't know. It'd be interesting. Cause like magma makes me think of that, right? Like, like the collaborative work you could do. And I don't know. Cool. All right. Let's see here. I have this guy's butt sticking out of the water. I'm gonna put some highlights on him. Highlight on his butt. <laughs> this is splashing up like this. There we go. <laughs> He's diving in there. <laughs> All right, I want to go up and work with uh, work on Ven's. Um, uh, I want to work on Ven's. Uh, uh, his uh, creature up here. This is really cool. It's awesome. Okay, so let's see here. Let's get let's give him some saturation in the nose. And which layer am I on? Okay, I think I have to raise up my layer or do another layer above that. Let's go here. Okay, there we go. Yeah, perfect. Okay. I want to try to preserve what Vince has got going here and just add to it. like an occlusion shadow underneath this lip and in between this this lip like right here a little bit of a darker occlusion shadow this this uh these teeth would be casting a little bit of a shadow too be casting a bit of a shadow there onto his uh onto his lip and onto his face same thing with the nose the nose would be casting a shadow again this is what i'm thinking about like when it comes to like when it comes to um like the environment and everything like you want it to uh you want it to fit and gel, right? And now that I look back to my other guy, I think he needs like a little bit um, of a lightening 
in certain spots to get him to kind of fit. Like I think there'd be a little bit more reflected light down there. Uh, maybe a bit more. And then this area would probably be a bit darker. In here would probably be a bit darker. Yeah, like this would be a bit darker in here. Um, yeah, you want to think about like the, the, the general structure of what you're painting or what you're drawing and really think about... Um, you know, like what the direction of the light source is, what kind of shadows would be cast there, you know, what kind of reflected light would come back up, because it would definitely be reflect light from that lip, like hitting the bottom of this nose too. So that would play a big role like this, like that. Let's grab a brush that will work for this hair. Moss kind of, let's make this like mossy up here like his his eyebrow area and stuff like that would be like mossy let's go like this let's make this darker behind here and like the trees in the background provide a really great you know idea of like a what you know maybe like if there was moss on this creature like what it what it would look like right so like we can look at the back and use that as a reference point and be able to figure out what uh, what we're doing here. Okay, here, let's see. I want to back up to you. I want to just real quick, I want to see what you guys are doing. Nice. Oh, man, that, that's super cool, that dragon in the bottom left. He's got like, like six eyes. That's awesome. That's super cool. And Andy, that's looking at the rocking too. That's super awesome. Yeah, this is great. This is really fun. Really fun. All right, let's make the back of him a little bit lit up. Cool stuff, guys. Yeah, yeah, it's getting there. Yeah, for sure. It looks great. Again, like my favorite thing is like jamming like this. Like just jamming is like, man, this is so fun. So fun at a light box this year you know and they did it last year too they have like that that area where everybody can draw on everything uh, or i'm sorry they have an area where you can draw on anything that's there where it's like a big wall and a big um you can't draw on everything you can draw on the on everything that's there in front of you and stuff you can just draw anywhere um on a big wall and they have like you know drawing the stuff you can use to draw um They'll have like materials that they want you to try out or whatever, but also people can bring their own and just do whatever on there. And it ends up being like a really, man, it's a really cool, cool mural at the end. It's just super cool because it's like, you know, everybody comes with all their different styles and they all show up there and do it. It's, it's a blast. It's really cool. Definitely like, like magma. Oh, you used to photo bash for years. Okay, nice. Now I'm curious, Andy, like, you know, if um, like, so, when you're photo bashing, right? Do you try to look for um, do you try to look for references that that match, like you know, whether it's diffused lighting or whether you know it's uh, you know like different things like that, or do, would you just grab like would you be more would it be like more form based or like value value based or like would you be able? Because I'm just wondering, like if you would you have to get lighting that's really similar or would you be able to kind of manipulate that when you bring it in and you would photo bash like what what would be like the criteria like what's the strongest criteria you know that you would you would need for that like is it the shape or the silhouette or the form or is it the mostly color match the nearest oh, okay interesting interesting okay so that's the most annoying thing to, to shift and change huh is the uh, color matching that's that's interesting that's interesting because that isn't what i would expect that isn't what i would expect i would expect it to be um you know like like have the same kind of diffuse lighting and same kind of that's that's interesting that's very interesting i know craig mullins like we were talking about him earlier like he did a lot of um matte painting and i think in most matte painting there's there's um a fair amount of photo bashing too i think people are going to do that they can he could i mean he could render it you know if he wanted to as well but i think there's a fair amount that that people photo bash uh with on a on a matte painting because there's just no reason to like get certain textures when and it's for, especially if it's for a concept when you can just, you know, like, like, uh, photo bash it and, and get it done. You know, I want to make this a bit darker, this drop shadow underneath here. 
I heard one uh, art director that I knew say to say actually that um, he he like had to tell new artists that were starting like if they were going to be concept artists like he always had to have a conversation with them because um, oh the curve filters okay the cur yeah right to to make everything match up and stuff like that did you do a lot of painting Andy did you actually do a lot of like like having to paint over stuff like I know you would paint like you know like you would um uh you know do like a like a stamp you know like a stamp brush or like whatever or I'm, i don't know i'm having a brain fart but you know what i mean like the clone brush that's what i mean like i know you do a lot of clone brush probably and do different things like that but would you do would you do a lot of painting of things like digital yes okay gotcha you do a, that's that's cool that makes it more fun that makes it that makes it more fun but but yeah that art director he was like he uh he said um he said like he would always have people new people you know, come to uh, the studio or whatever. And they would, he would tell them, Oh, I need this like concept or I need this idea. And then they would just sit there and start painting it like fresh from their imagination and stuff like that. And he would always have to tell them, Hey, listen, like we need the idea. Like we need it yesterday, you know? And, and so he would always have to tell people, he said like, like, you know, this is a concept, right? This is an idea. It's not an illustration. And so, um, so, you know, there was like a big learning curve that way where people would come in and typically wouldn't, they'd be like hesitant to photo bash and stuff like that. And they'd be, and then after a while, they'd be like, okay, cool. We just need the idea. Cause that's the whole thing. Like there's a difference between concept art and, and, um, and, you know, art that you're making for illustration and things like that. When you just need the idea, you know, it's, uh, you know, you can, you photo bash, you do whatever you can do to get that idea the fastest possible. Like that's what you do now on an illustration or when something's going to be like the final version of something like you, you might not be able to do that. But, um, and a lot of what they show is concept art. Like if blizzard blizzard shows like concept art, like some of it, it was painted that way, but a lot of it like, wasn't that's like illustration really. It's not really like concept art. Like the initial stuff was probably super loose, like crazy, crazy loose and crazy, uh, simple, you know, but they, they wouldn't want to show that you know, something written on a napkin, like to the, <laughs> to everybody say, Hey, here's the concept art, but that's more, that's closer to reality. A lot of times or something's photo bashed or something. And it's just like the idea, you know, cause you've got to be able to like spin, spin through and, and go through ideas. You know, you have to be able to do that quickly and, and, uh, efficiently. So you know, spending all like, you know, a week on one illustration, every time you have one idea and concept, like just isn't feasible, but, um, yeah, yeah. So it's funny, but I always was, I thought it was funny because I would after I talked to him, you know, I I uh, I realized I was like, I was like, okay, so a lot of this concept art that they put up is not really, not really concept art, like it is. Louis Gonzalez, I taught a uh, workshop in Ireland um, for schoolism, and um, and uh, he was there, and he worked on, he works for. Uh, for I don't I don't know if he still does actually, but he worked for for Disney and worked for Pixar, and, and uh, so he was like the head of story I think on um, Ratatouille and stuff like that, and I may be representing him wrong, but that's that's what if I remember right that's what that's what he was saying, and uh, he he showed like some demos for like what he would do and it was all so very very rough super rough like all his his story development because it's just about really about like the idea and. And, you know, trying to get across, like, what's happening in the scene and all that stuff. And so I remember asking him, I said, uh, I said, what's the most important thing you look for? Like, if if you're hiring someone or whatever, or you need someone to do what you do, like, fill your position. He's like, oh, just having a point of view. He said, if someone has a point of view, then it's a then it's it's good. You know, it's good. Then he's like, I can work with that. So I was like, oh, interesting. Yeah, right. That's the whole thing. And And there's no right. Exactly, Andy. Like. And that's the thing, like, there's no reason to spend a bunch of time on something that may not be a good idea. You know, if it's not a good idea, like, don't spend gobs of time on it. You know, don't spend gobs of time on something that, you you know, might not work. And so that's the whole idea. And I think, you know, most, I think we can kind of take that into uh, what we do as artists, like, in every area, because, you know, if you have a painting, an oil painting, and you're spending a long time on the oil painting, and it's going to be, you know, going to be like a big investment like spend time with the with the composition spend time with like as a thumbnail first and get that to work like be real sure that that's going to look nice and good 
you know, before you like sink all that time into it, um, you know, and really like dive in, like that's just a good policy, like in general, I think, because it just, it helps you not waste time, be much, much more efficient. much much more efficient which is great this guy's fun i'm having fun painting this guy okay so let's see here like let's make this a little bit lighter i can spend a lot of quite a lot of time but happy to start again for a better uh better piece yeah yeah it's true it's true and that's that's what i like i like that um that initial stage like the concept stage i love that because uh, or or the composition thumbnail stage and stuff like that because it's like it's like pure creation you know like and you really get like a feel of i've got to take it i've got to take into account these rocks here that are on this surface like this um, i was just kind of drawing this shadow for this guy like without paying attention but um but yeah it's it's that's the fun part to me too like i i think that's that's such a blast like just coming up with ideas and that so if you get to do that again man you know anytime you can do that like that's the that's the cool thing anytime i can learn something or you know or um you know work on an idea like work on the concept or work on the idea and like kind of build it like it's just so so fun that's the fun part for sure so i agree with you andy it's like just Jump in there, get some stuff done. If you need to start again, like then it's fun. Then then it's like uh, making a new song, right? If you're a musician, it's like making a new song. So. Yeah, I do too. I do too, Andy. I enjoy like rendering, you know, like starting rough like that 100%. I always, I always say like the way I think about it is very much like um, like I'm um, bringing the image into focus, right? So like it's out of focus at first. And then I'm bringing it into focus and slowly kind of like racking that focus. And, uh, and that's like, I, th I think definitely like working from general to specific is like, is much more helpful for me for sure. That's definitely the way that I work. Yeah. Yes. All the texture you're talking about, are uh, you talking about just in general, like when you're doing that, or do you mean the texture of what I'm painting, Andy? What do you mean? Did you mean just in general, just in general? I think you meant just in general. I just wanted to make sure I was tracking with you. Oh, a pencil. Yes, yes, yes. Got you. Got you. Yes, yes, yes. For sure. For sure. Okay, let's see. I want to put this shadow underneath here. And this would have a little bit of reflected light underneath it, like just a bit. Dude, can you imagine going through the woods and seeing a massive creature like this, like sitting on the hill? Like, can you imagine coming off this scene and there's this eyeball in the water, this six eyed dragon in the corner? Like a flower guy with his feet in the in the water, <laughs> like a like a ginormous lizard. Like, what the heck? <laughs> That's like that would be so crazy. As a kid, I would have been like, yes, <laughs> I would have loved it. I loved it as a kid. <laughs> I would have been terrified, but I would have I would have definitely come back. I'm not sure I would have told anybody about it either. Stumbled across some creatures in the woods like that. Not sure I would tell anybody about it. <laughs> okay. I'm going to work on these eyes a little bit. It's tricky because they're kind of on the shadow side. I think Venz did it right when he put the. Uh, this area mostly in shadow over here. So I have to be careful. I don't go too bright with the values. And I think this nose is so, so bright. It would probably reflect into the eye a little bit. So close to the eye that I think it would. Okay, let's see here.
Right. His cheek a little bit lighter. Yeah, Ven's, Ven's um, drew in a very structural way, so it makes it easier for me to work over top of this and understand what the lighting would be. Um, and, and that's why if you start thinking, if you start thinking more structurally when you, when you're drawing, like what's the, you know, what's the 3d shape of like the area I'm working on, you know, in whatever area you're working on, if you start thinking about how it exists in 3d, that's, it's all, it's all, all of these concepts that I'm talking about are, are, um, you know, linked, right? So thinking about everything as a 3D scene, thinking about like where the light is coming from, thinking about the structure of the object that you're drawing, you know, it's uh, it's really, really um, super important, but it's, it's just, it's all linked like that. Oh, you thought your inks were on a separate layer, been working on one layer. Oh no, retro. I hate that. But you know what though? Like, um, oh, are you talking about, are you doing the dragon retro? Are you doing the? Oh yeah, that yeah. I see your name down there. Yeah, yes. Uh, yeah, that. Uh, yeah, that happens. Yeah. I wonder if you could. Wonder if you could duplicate it. Wonder if you could duplicate it and bump up the contrast like a lot, and then make it a multiply layer. Like, would that work to get you your your thing back? Um, you might be able to get like at least a layer over top that would be like your inks. You should try that and see if it see if it works. Let me know if that if you you know if you if you understand what I mean like like I because I think like because I think like the lighter parts of it probably would you know the lighter parts of it probably would um, would just turn to white like if you went like extreme contrast. Try that at least and see what you find. That might help save it so that you could have them on a separate layer. Give it a shot and see. I've had that happen before. And even when I don't want to work on one layer, I always find myself like kind of like heading back there to that territory where I, I work on one layer all the time. It's really funny. I'm like, dang it. I catch myself like working on one layer. I'm like, no, I got to stay more disciplined with my, my layers. Okay. Let's add some of these striations. I don't know how to do that. Um, okay. Let me, um, let me take it over and then I'll give it back to you. Let me see if I can do it real quick. I'm just going to take it over and make a duplicate of it. And um, let me see if, uh, if I can do it. I'll, I'll give it back to you though. In one sec. I'm just going to duplicate it. And then I'll give you this one back and then assign layer to, there you go. Okay. So then here I'll take this one. I'm going to move it somewhere else and I'll see if I can get it. Um, let me see if I can get it to work. Uh, all right. Let's see. So let's, let's boost the contrast. Let's do a filter saturation. Oops. Nope. I'm going to go saturation, lightness, saturation here lightness like this and then let's try a really high contrast like this and then what i'll do is go multiply yes there we go so now you know you might want to like take down the the opacity a little bit or something but here you go i'm going to give you this layer i'm going to assign it to you there you go, retro. And then, so that's your copy over top. And so you could, what you could do is the, the layer underneath, if you hit that opacity, if you lock the opacity to your layer underneath, like the one that has the color on it, you can just put a solid color, like fill that whole thing in, like lock your opacity for that. And, um, and then fill the whole thing in. If you don't know how to lock the opacity, guys, it's right above that layer column. If you're looking on my screen right now, you can lock the opacity right there. Um, you know, and yeah, no problem. No problem. Well, it's cool. Like, it's cool. I mean, like it's, it's, um, it's amazing that <laughs> it just blows my mind that magma is like a, it's built in a browser and you can do all these things to it and you can, like, <laughs> it's like crazy. 
it's crazy like i can't even because like guys i remember when digital painting like was first starting to become a thing like i remember when it was first starting to become a thing and uh like, I mean, it was around before, you know, before I started using it, but like not that much, you know, I'm old, <laughs> I'm 43. So like digital painting, you know, when it came in, like, like to, like to just see where it's come to, like, it's just crazy. This, this is all browser based. Like I would never think that you could have a browser with like, you know, 50 people on it at one time. Like it just blows my mind, blows my mind. Yeah, Telerium, if you um so there's the the filter, the filter command up top there has the brightness, contrast, a blur. It has curves and stuff as well. Um, but if you put that as a multiply layer, you can um you can do that. I've the reason I knew to do that is because I've done like drawings and then had um like inked them and stuff in Photoshop, and then I just use like a multiply layer over top, and then I'll you know change the the local value underneath and things like that. So I've done that. So then I I think I I think I came in here and and said, oh, is there a way to do that in here? And I was like, oh yeah, there is. There's a way to do it, for sure. So, um, yeah, cool stuff. Yeah, cool stuff. And so, like, what's great is there's a lot of tools here like that where you can like lock the opacity like that. Really, really good. And that may be what you were talking about that you were Telerium. I didn't know if you knew, but it's great. Like, if you can lock the opacity, like you know, you've got a creature back there. And let's say we've got a creature that's like, let's say I want to put a dude like right here next to your creature. Like, like let's say I want to, I'm going to get rid of him, but let's say I put a person right here. I can lock that opacity and then really get the lighting in there. Like grab one of the soft brushes and like get a, get a top down lighting kind of scenario like this and get it to be darker underneath, you know, like that kind of thing. And like, it's pretty cool. Like to be able to do that, like just by like locking the opacity and, and controlling that you having a silhouette like that to work from is really, really great. Super good. That's really powerful. I think so it's a tool like as a, as an oil painter, man, like if you had something that would like, it would be like having, um, like templates that you always had access to, like you just always had access to like this group of templates that you can put around your work and like control where you're putting the oil paint, which would make such a massive difference with, <laughs> with oil painting. It would make it like, it would make it much easier. <laughs> Certain things that would make it much easier. So, oh, I meant for both the filters and the opacity lock. Okay, good. Yeah, no problem. No problem, Telerium. Yeah, for sure. There's also, if you guys aren't used to using it, there is also like when you're creating your silhouettes, um, underneath the paint bucket on the left, there's the lasso brush. And it's actually really good for making silhouettes. Like you can come and like, you know, go over top of stuff like this and make like, if you just forget about like what it's drawing, like it can get a little confusing if you look at what is happening with the brush while you're making it. But if you, if you just focus on the shape that you're creating, like just pretend like you're drawing it with uh, with line work, you know, like let's say I'm drawing a dude with his shoulders or whatever. I can kind of do this. You can create a silhouette like super fast. So like if you had a guy up there and you wanted to make a, you know, like antlers or whatever, and then you want to make the, your creature like this. And they have like, if you focus, like I said, on just drawing out what you need to draw out, like, and you kind of do this, you can get a real quick silhouette to work with like this, like, like that kind of thing. Right. So you get something like that and then you can always obviously erase it, right. Erase the silhouette and then carve back into it. But it's just a really quick fast way to get something like that it's it's really cool i would recommend trying it like if you guys haven't used that tool before because it's just especially with landscapes like if you have a landscape like if i'm doing a composition study like and i go like this you know like this uh let's see like this comes through like this and like you know here's like a river you know and then i'll like let's say i've got a horizon in the back like oops let me do it like this this you know and then we have some mountains back there or something right here's some mountains and like i mean you can do this stuff like so fast like really fast with that kind of tool like maybe there's a tree right like you know there's a tree right here or something and you can kind of lock in some shapes like it's just really quick and easy like and yeah you're going to adjust it and stuff but you know but it's real that lasso tool is really really helpful really really quick and easy okay somebody asked a question too i wanted to see um 
Uh, let me see. What's your biggest fascination or inspiration? Ooh. <sighs> yeah, like I... So my problem my entire life is that I just like everything. Like my kids always make fun of me because I'll be like, they'll be doing school and I'm like, hey, you know, oh, cool. You're doing chemistry. And they're like, I don't like chemistry. And I'll say, well, no, it's really cool because of this and this. And they'll be like, dad, you like everything. It's like, like, you know, they're just like, you like everything. I really do. <laughs> I like all foods, like all, like I just, I kind of. You know, I feel like there's so much cool stuff out there. And when you don't really, you don't really, um, you don't really realize, oh, I got to try the lasso brush too. I've always used the, yeah, try the lasso brush. Yeah, see, it, it, it can help with certain things. You know, you can use the brush too, but it can help with certain things as well. Um, but yeah, I've always, I've always like been drawn to learning, you know, and I think, uh, I think that's like the thing that, that I love to do the most. Um, I love to just learn. And, uh, and so, and, and I think like when you start diving into things, when like something may seem boring or stupid on the surface and you start diving into things and you start realizing like, oh man, that's actually kind of cool, you know, like, and, um, and you know, that could be knitting or that could be something, right. I always ask people like if they, especially if they're an artist, like even if they're knitting or they're doing something like that or crocheting or like doing like a quilt or something. I always ask them like, Hey, how do you pick your colors? Like, how do you decide your colors? How do you, because you, you just like, you know, you never know, like, and you start talking to people and it's fascinating, like what they, what the way they function and what they do. And you start to notice this like overlap and, and it's uh it's really interesting, really, really interesting. Um, and there's so much overlap in so many different areas you know, I was just actually talking about like there's a um, guy at the gym where I train who's a striking coach for like some UFC guys and stuff. And I asked him, I said, you know, because there's a there's a timing for drums. Like if you play drums, like it's a weird timing. It's called five, four. So if you're like one, two, three, four, it's like one, two, three, four, five, 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 one, two, three, four, five. It's a weird beat because normally it's like one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. That's normally what it is, right? And it's like one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. It's really weird. And so it's a weird beat. So I asked him, I was like, do you ever like train anybody like based on music? Like, do you ever train them so that they get weird timings when they're punching and stuff? And and he was like, oh, yeah, he's like, like, like my entire life. That's what, you know, what I've done. And like, and that's not it. So it's fascinating. And then it's the same with art, like with compositions. And then I'm talking with students about about compositions later on that night. And and it's like, oh, yeah, well, you need to do something surprising here. Like this is too boring. Right. This is the same shape repeated over and over again. And you don't you can repeat a shape, but you don't want to repeat it too much. Right. And so it's one of those things where it's like there's so much crossover in all these different areas and um it's really fascinating like really fascinating how everything sort of begins to link up and join up and the more things you learn about especially if they're all artistic like when you're talking about music painting like all that stuff like it's very much like uh it's very much that you know you just start to see that like you know i don't know that is that the synchronicity is that that is that the right term for it or whatever but it's like it's that kind of a thing that may be the wrong term but but that sort of thing so anyways because of that i liked i like everything like and i feel like i'm passionate about, <laughs> about everything my wife will laugh she'll be like because somebody will show me something and she'll be like don't show john like then we're gonna have a house full of whatever you know <laughs> like like don't show you know because i i really do I really do feel like that, but I will tell you this recently, which I had not done this before recently. I have, I've done some uh, animation projects and I had never done any animation and stuff like that. Um, and I've had a total blast doing that. And I think the reason I've had such a blast doing that is because it sort of combines everything like we were using quill we were using like vr i think i was mentioning that the other time like we were using vr um and and so like then then i had to make music for behind it right so i had to make music and sound effects for it and then i had to paint it like in quill then we had to animate it and then we had to do all the like that's that was really fun because it was like it was like multifaceted right it's like totally multifaceted so I, I think like I'm, I've been getting into that. The, the thing I'm I think most passionate about right now is that 
like exploring that and seeing what kind of like personal projects I can do with that because it sort of, like I said, it sort of combines everything, right? It combines everything. So, um, yeah, so it's, yeah, I've got, yeah, I'm, I'm man, I, I, I just, I'm always thinking about weird stuff. Like, you know, I embarrass my kids probably because I'm, I just, I'm weird, you know? And I actually had a friend say, we're like, I was thinking of playing, um, D and D with her. It was hilarious. And she was like, like with her and, and the group that she plays with. And she was like, kind of like, I think you won't be too weird for that. <laughs> Cause I, <laughs> that statement was so funny. I think you won't be too weird for them. I was like, that's the most hilarious thing ever. I was like, that's really funny because I, I do like, I'm, I'm definitely weird, definitely weird. And so, you know, I think like some, you have to kind of, I have my friends kind of like, it takes a certain kind of person to tolerate me, you know, the weirdness or at least, at least be able to like, kind of look past it, you know? Um, but, uh, but <laughs> yeah, I fit right in. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's funny, but yeah. So I, I just, and I've, I always feel like most people, it's like if you're not passionate about something, it's just because you don't know about it, right? Like if you know about it, like you'll you'll all of a sudden understand why it's so exciting, right? So you may not want to like let's say math is not your thing, right? So you're like, I don't love math, you know. Let's say you don't. Well, yeah, that's that's fine. But what about like astronomy? Like, what about like getting to the point where I don't think anybody would think it wasn't exciting to look at other planets through a telescope. Like that's so exciting, right? That's like fascinating and amazing. And so I'm not sure that there's really a person around that wouldn't feel like that. Like most people would look through a telescope and just be like, holy crap, that's awesome. You know? So I, you know, so I think it, like maybe not the math itself, like doing the math, if somebody doesn't like that, but like the results of it or, or, you know, I don't know, like there's always a side to everything. I think that's definitely interesting. And I think, I think the more you start exploring the world and the more you start really as an artist, like start looking at things and really caring about things, like the better of an artist you're going to be, because the more interested you are, the more you'll know about each thing. Like it'll, it'll be easy for you to kind of, to paint something and remember it if you're doing it from imagination or whatever, because you understand the, or cause you like it, right. Cause you like it and you've explored it in reality. You know, like I'll, sometimes like, and you're never bored. If you feel like that, you're never bored. Like I'm out somewhere, I'm standing outside, man, we're just standing around here. I'll watch ants. Right. And I'll be like, what are the, how do they work? How do ants work? Right. You know, and then I'll just sit there and watch them. And it's like, I can sit there and watch them for like hours. Like it's crazy, man. Like that whole world that they, you know, or, or something like that, you know? And so you're never really bored. And if you're out somewhere and you're in line, like, and I just watch people, man. I'm like, okay, I can use this for animation later. Like, look at this behavior. Look at the way they're talking to each other. Like somebody gets really excited or a kid starts crying and you're like, what are they doing with their face? What are they doing with their expression? Like I, I have a um, part of my class, my portrait class on um, schoolism is on expression. And it started really with like, a, it, it really started with me, the expression side of things you know, when I, um, uh, would like notice people, right. Just like be out and about and would notice people. And I was like, man, I was like, how do we know how someone feels like, you know, we, we, they have, we have like the sound that we're registering, but also we're seeing their face and how can we, it's so subtle. I was like, how can we, how do we know all that stuff? You know, that kind of thing. So anyways, I was just thinking about all that and it led me to, to that side of things. So that was, a, this is a long answer to that simple question, but <laughs> sorry, but, um, okay. Let me see what you guys are saying. Yeah. Random patterns, Andy. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Random patterns. That's what you need to go for in those situations. All information can be applied anywhere given enough abstraction and creativity. Exactly, Frank. Exactly. Yes. Right. Precisely. Precisely. Okay. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Yes. It's like, it has a big, uh, very deep thinking. You fit right, right in. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, uh, agreed. Uh, we'll buy one later. Oh, what were we talking about, Andy? When you said you'll buy one later? Uh, sorry, I I didn't I missed what uh, when when we were talking about buying one. I, I I'm sorry, I can't remember what you were referencing there. I'll film answer my new camera macro shots. Yes, that's it. Oh, nice Tellarium. That's that's great that you're that you're taking it. Um, that's great. A telescope. Yes, 
Yes. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Yes. A telescope. Yeah. I would seriously, I would recommend everybody, everybody get a telescope. If you've never looked through a telescope, it's a crazy experience. It's a crazy experience. Like I, the first time I looked through and I was like, that's Saturn. I was like, that's freaking Saturn. I was like, I can see the rings. I was like, what the heck? I was like, and I looked at the person. I was like, it's, and the teachers like smiled. It was like, I was in college. I took astronomy. It just has like an elective class. And he started smiling. Cause like other people weren't as, you know, they didn't feel like that, I guess. But I did. I was like, I was like, holy crap. I said, that is amazing. I was like, and I said to him, I said, it's really there. Like it's really there. And, and he started laughing. He goes, yeah. I said, I know that's a stupid thing to say. Like it's really there, you know, but it's like, but I realized I had never looked at it with my own eyes. I had always seen it with like a book or whatever. And so I was like, dang, I was like, there are other planets out there. Like there are other planets. Like what the heck? Like that, you know, and, and like the idea just like hits you. And then, you know, I looked up with my nephew, like the ring nebula, the ring nebula. It, it was really hard to find for us with this telescope, but we finally found it and we're able to lock in on it we got so excited we would like we would look up stuff all the time it i think it changes your perspective on on you know the universe and like it, it really does like i i really um i really think it's 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 fascinating you know um and, and when you see it with your own eyes i'm telling you there's something different about it there's something different about seeing it with your own eyes it's really really interesting um, and astronauts talk about that. Astronauts talk about like when they go to space and they come back like or when they are like when they come back, they're changed because when they were out there, they looked at the earth and it's like seeing the whole earth from space just like changes your outlook, like how small, you know, you as an individual are. And and, you know, like just then you see like this black void of space that's just like endless and it's just crazy like it's crazy so i don't see how it can't change your thinking you know to go out there and and uh you know it's the same thing i think it's the same thing with with looking through a telescope just not as powerful obviously than as being as being an astronaut on the space station looking out or something that's totally different but <laughs> but you know but i think it's like something that everybody should do like i think everybody should look through a telescope at some point like i just i think it's amazing so um, yeah, but, and they're cheap. They're not too bad. Like they're, they're fairly cheap. You know, they don't, they're not like, um, super expensive. So you can get some pretty good ones. I've always thought like if I had, you know, um, tons of money or was retired or whatever, you know, and, and had money to do it, I'd get like a property and have like a, one of those, like you can get some massive, you can get massive telescopes. Like, like even just as an amateur, like you can get like a, I don't even know, like the end of it is like a 20 inch one or something or like, or like 30 inch or something. Like it's really hard. Cause you have to have like a concrete base and it, it, like you have to have something that's so, so stable. Like you have to have like a building under it basically, because like it needs to be so stable that, um, uh, because any slight movement when you have that big of a telescope will make everything like jump and go crazy. So it, it gets a little crazy when you have the big, big telescopes like that. But um, like you have to be you have to have a whole setup for it. But but man, that would be really cool to just have a massive telescope later. Like who's that weird guy with this property and he paints all day and he's got that massive telescope. On his property. <laughs> I think that'd be awesome. <laughs> I hear weird music coming from there and like, you know, that's <laughs> That's what, but I mean, like how, how cool would that be though? Like if I had a property and I just had like a gym for fighting and training and like a huge telescope, like a big music studio, like an art studio, like all this stuff, like, and my grandkids come over and they're like, this is the coolest place ever. I'd have like a little chef station where you could make food and like, like whatever, all the arts all the arts <laughs> yeah theme park that's it that's it <laughs> that'd be awesome that'd be so fun <laughs> for real so yeah so i've got i've definitely got passion to spare and it's like really for me it's like my whole life it's been like directing it to, to the right it's putting it in the right direction like making sure it's efficient like what i'm heading towards is efficient you know um and going in the right direction it's like 
you know, nobody really ever had to wind me up. They just had to kind of like point to point, you know, make sure I was doing the, the like the right thing. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's always been my my issue. <laughs> you got anybody you know has ever considered me one to you know not be intense? You know. <laughs> It does make life interesting, though, as you said. Like, it does. It does. I just think people are interesting. I think things are interesting. And, you know, I really, I really do. And I kind of think, I kind of think that's our job as artists, right? It's our job to be interested in things. You know, we, if we're not interested, then the viewer is not going to be interested when we paint something. That's for sure. You know, we've got to, we've got to want, know, want to know how it works. Nice guys. Oh, that dragon's coming along retro. That's looking awesome. That's super cool. I like his feet too. And his head, like, dude, the eyes are like, it's killer. I love it. Nice. And we got the, the, um, the, the dragon's got some like cool, like, it's cool. Like, looks like a part of the landscape there. Like, that's, that's really cool. Yeah, everybody took what I said to heart. Like everybody's everybody's making it a part of the um you know, a part of the uh, environment really well. Like it all looks like forest creatures that could like that could hide and that could, you know, be tucked away somewhere. What what should I name the creature uh in the water that I did with the the guy with the boot his booty sticking up out of the uh out of the water? <laughs> He's got his butt cheeks his butt cheeks sticking up out of there. He's like a weird, like failed mermaid. Like he's like the worst. He's like he's like he like all the other mermaids like shunned him. So now he's got a or merman. So now he's got a Nessie. That's <laughs> Nessie's funny. <laughs> and so he has to like just go like <laughs> swim around streams. Blobberhead. Nessie Blobberhead. That's good. I see blobberhead. That's funny. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I'm going to do this. I'm going to use that lasso tool. This. There we go. <laughs> I want to get the circle a little better. A little smoother. Try to be smooth here. There we go. A little better. The bumness monster. <laughs> Nessie the bumness monster. That's good. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> uh, That's really good. Um, Nessie the bumness monster. <laughs> I am nasty. <laughs> I am nasty. The bumness monster. I need to go. I need to make it a little bit bigger so it's a little dark. Actually, I need to make the density up higher. Hold on, I need to do it again because I had the density down by accident. Okay. No. There we go. I um Nessie. The bumness monster. I need to make room for this. The bum. I'll do this. Hold on. I gotta my you can see like my I wouldn't be a good calligrapher. <laughs> I bomb this. Monster. 
I can't put the dash in. I could probably actually. Yeah, let's move this over. Paste this. I'll move that over a little bit above. Okay. Here we go. The bumness. Monster. There we go. <laughs> I was going to put hear me roar. <laughs> Nessie the bum this monster hear me roar. <laughs> what would Ness what would what would Vens say to that? Cuz then I'll have this creature saying what Vems would say to that. What Vens would say would say to that. Uh here let's see. Vens would be like he would be like uh He'd probably be like, hmm. I'm gonna make this smaller. That's interesting. That's what he would say. I think Vens would be like, huh, that's interesting. <laughs> Here we go. Huh. Interesting. I feel like this creature would sort of be like aloof, you know. <laughs> you know, he's like there in the forest, just a little bit aloof. <laughs> that was a fun sketch that Ven's had, though. It was good. It was fun doing it. It was nice and structural, so I could just like put it on that that hilltop up there, which is cool. Well, awesome, guys. Thank you guys so much. I'm going to, I have to actually head out now. I can only do an hour and a half today. Um, but, oh no, you're lagging. Try refreshing anonymous. If you're, if you're lagging, try refreshing. Cause there's, it shouldn't be too many people or anything like try refreshing and see if you see if that'll help it for you. Um, oh yeah, no problem, Andy. Like it was great. Um, and you guys feel free, like, like whenever I'm doing a session or doing anything, like feel free to, um, to ask any questions, um, you know, about anything. Like, I like that. That was a good question. And, um, yeah, no problem. Retro, uh, you know, feel free to ask anything, you know, um, even if it's not, doesn't, if it's, you know, especially if it's art related, like even if it, um, you know, doesn't relate to what we're talking about in this, the particular session, I don't care, you know, feel free to ask any kind of art, art advice or anything. Yeah. Thank you guys. This was really fun. Uh, this is awesome. I want to post this up. If you guys, um, actually, I'm going to take a, everybody put, everybody kind of like move your cursor by your, uh, your thing. I want to take a screenshot so I can see whose is whose. Or actually, if you want, when, if you guys follow me on Instagram, um, it's just John Hardesty, J-O-N Hardesty. I'll post up this image later. I'm going to save it and uh, I'll post up this image and um, just tag yourself uh, or tell me which one you did like in there, like, you know, just say, Hey, that, Oh, I did the creature in the top left or whatever. And, um, and then I'll tag you in the, uh, in the image or whatever. Um, and I'll throw you guys a, a shout out that way. It's fun. Cause I love this kind of stuff. It's so cool. So fun. Um, uh, yes, yes. I'll, yeah. Oh, yes. Good idea. I'll I'll go tomorrow. Like I'll come tomorrow and then you guys can have finished it. Yeah, totally. hundred percent. I'll leave it up. That's a great idea. That's a great idea to leave it up. So really really cool stuff yeah you guys did awesome it's looking great it looks it looks really really cool super fun i'll get rid of my uh i'm gonna get rid of my uh my little chat things because i feel like it kind of ruins the vibe the forest vibe that we had going i like just without it there uh, yeah that looks good that's awesome okay cool well thank you guys thanks so much and uh and i'll catch you guys next time um I'm working on a bunch of things, you know, behind the scenes and stuff like that. You know, I may like starting next year, uh, I want to talk to Solomon about it, but I may next year, like start to ramp it up and do a little bit more of them and stuff like that. I just wanted to make sure, because you know, I know I'm doing it a little more infrequent. I'm doing it, you know, once a month right now, but I might ramp those things up later. And I just kind of wanted to, to slide into that and uh, make sure that I could <laughs> make sure that I could do it. 
and fit it. Um, and so, uh, so I'll, I'll be, I'll be, uh, and I'm kind of doing stuff on the back end in terms of my like art space and different things like that. So I'm, I'm excited about it. So, um, I've got a, I've got a bunch of things kind of in the chamber coming. So, um, so it's going to be fun. Uh, but thank you guys so much. Really, really good work to everybody and uh, great questions. Good conversation too. It was, it was a blast and, and uh, I'm glad that you guys were responding and talking too, because otherwise it would just be me talk, talking to myself, which, uh, which I'm okay doing, but it's, uh, let's be honest. It's a little more boring. You know, if I'm talking to myself, you know, I'm not the most exciting. So I just, <laughs> you know, so <laughs> all right, guys, well, thank you so much. And uh, it was good to see you guys. And, um, and I will catch you guys next time. Okay. Take